Hey, what's up YouTube? So a uh, quick recap uh, from yesterday. Uh, we finished up, got the smoker kind of set on the trailer. We did find that we have an issue that needs to be resolved. Uh, there was another item that I wanted to address, which was the top of the posts that this the smoker sits on. Um, since I'm not gonna be able to fully weld all the way around each one of the tubes, I need to cap the tube so water can't get inside and cause rust on the inside. So I cut these out on the plasma this morning and didn't film it, but these are caps. I'm just going to take this off, cap them, and uh, put it back on. Um, let's get her done. Okay, so here's the fit up, and that's why it's kind of a pain in the butt to do it this way, but it's the way I like to do it. It's easier to model it, so long as you got some tools like the magnets and stuff to help hold it, it works pretty good. Not my best work, but it definitely sealed up. Now this is where the, the gauge will thread in. I'm gonna get this welded on here.
So I got this jigged up here, ready to start tacking this counterweight, and uh, I'm going to get it welded up. Well, the moment of truth, right? I got the doors all knocked up. Everything's uh, tuned up. Everything uh, works smooth. You know, a 50-pound door, and it opens. Counterweight takes over about right there, about halfway up. You can, you can see it's really quite nice. Same with this one. Once I get all the hardware, this is just mock up hardware. I've got uh, acorn nuts, stainless steel acorn nuts that are self-locking and uh, you don't want to put those on and off a bunch because they uh, they start to wear and they don't lock uh, so you basically you want to put those on once and done so everything is just kind of locked up right now um, but now we get things cleaned up tuning plates put in get the cooking grates, get the angles cut, welded together. I've got the expanded metal. All right, don't laugh. This is the same piece, been cutting for minutes and minutes.
Okay, so I got the tuning plates done. So you can see the end, that's where the smoke comes up. So we got our brake lights, side lights, breakaway, better breakaway, breakaway system with battery and charger. And this is the, uh, the wiring harness to hook to the truck. Okay, so these have a reflector on the outside. So one goes like this, the other goes like this on the other side. They're definitely wired a different color. Driver's side. So these wires come out of the top on the driver's side. These come out of the bottom on the passenger side. Okay, and it looks pretty good. I plan on get, putting the side markers right here. So I went ahead and got it laid out on both sides. <clears throat> I'm gonna drill a 7 8 hole and I'm gonna stub a section of uh, half inch a schedule 40 pipe through there. And I don't think this is gonna create a weak point, but I'm not a licensed engineer. It's going to be welded all the way around, it should be fine. And I got the piece of pipe. Stuff the pipe through, leave me about a quarter of an inch enough to put a weld on. Got the seven pin connector. A little bit of an overkill for the brakes, but I need to charge the battery for the brakes. Here in uh, California, you have to have breakaway brakes if the trailer is over like 500 pounds. Pretty ridiculous. But. So basically any trailer that you have, you gotta have breakaway brakes. So I had to do a little planning here. Um, got some layout done. But the plan is to have my drain valve come down here in the corner so my, my breakaway box is going to mount down here and it's out of the way. So I got some layout, got some brackets, and uh, let's get them welded on. Got the kill switch and basically breakaway. So if the trailer gets loose, it's going to put power to those brakes and bring the trailer to a stop without, hopefully, without causing any damage to anything. And 
it needs to be close enough to where this thing can attach to the hitch. Oh, the paint stinks. Ugh. So that was special. Uh, so much for not having to get underneath, underneath the trailer. <clears throat> so the worst thing when you're under there and you're all crammed up and it's hot, humid outside, you start sweating, you get your glasses fog up, you can't see a damn thing. Pain in the butt. Special. Very special. Well, at least that's done. Now I'm going to go get some measurements here, the deck of the trailer, and then uh, I got to cut these out on the plasma. Uh, maybe I'll do a screen capture to show that work. All right, well, let's go. <clears throat> Let me get you zoomed in here. You can see when you've got a when you've got it dialed in pretty good. You get 
very, very minimal dross. So all I gotta do is run the wire wheel over that and it cleans it right up. comes the hard part this piece is pretty heavy kind of big so and it doesn't just slide in it's got to kind of go in at an angle because it kind of locks in with these notches All right, I think I like it. I'm not sure. I'm going to let that one sink in for a minute. Yeah. You know I got a small shop when I got to park the forklift on my material. But there's a 4x10 sheet of 304 stainless, 10 gauge, which is basically one eighth of an inch thick. It's a little bit bigger than an eighth, ten thousandths of an inch bigger or something like that. But anyway, it's pretty sturdy stuff and uh, that's for the shelves. Okay, so last time I uh, was in the shop, <clears throat> we were working on getting the trailer kind of prepped with, for, for the wiring, getting the conduits in, getting the decking done. I worked on the fenders. I don't know what happened. Um, I didn't get the part of me, you know, fitting the fenders to the frame. I did get a little bit of a mock-up. I wasn't real happy with the fit, so I had to do some some work to get it to to fit right uh you know even even when you model stuff it's never perfect right it's perfect in the model but it's not perfect in the uh real world so here's the here's the fenders installed and what i had to do was notch an inch and a quarter out and kind of tub it onto the frame. Um, tire's not center, but that's okay because what I was really concerned with was the fit of the wheel inside the fender. And I'm pretty happy with the way it looks now. And uh, see, I've got it welded in to the light bracket there. And all my, uh, my problems with worrying about how I was gonna get the wires in, that's all done. Now I just drill through the fender tuck the wires in you know inside the fender secure them so that they're hidden and then my mounting holes are they're you know at the right height where i can just put the bolts in through the back you know through the fender and into the bracket so it worked out good um got both of them on one issue that i had is the lights you know they're fabricated from the same mold <clears throat> so the spot for the lights um, is on the kind of opposite or mirror. It's not mirrored, it's the same. So when you switch it to the other side, it's, it ends up being on the top. Well, my, my fender didn't quite work. So I notched a piece of that half inch conduit and cut it on the same angle as the fender and welded it in there. 
it's not the most beautiful thing but it works it'll keep the water out and that's the important thing and when it's painted you're never even going to notice i'll notice but no one else will but i got a few more little cleanups to do here and there on the fenders you know i uh had to work my day job today and it's late in the afternoon and i wanted to get in here and get this uh stainless cut out for the for the shelves um i was hoping to get here a little earlier i was going to go ahead and weld on these the shelf brackets and get these welded up and, and uh welded to the uh frame so i can get these mocked up it's, it's really kind of the last last little bit i got to do uh before i you know finish up and start painting it so anyway that's all i want to show you today uh, i know it's kind of a short clip but that's all right it's it's a weekday and uh you know this is a weekend gig for me here so thanks for watching